How you doing, guys? Welcome back to Faulty and Juice. So a question came up, actually a couple of questions came up about my entire league East. So I was going to do this video anyway. So I've utilized the entire league visa a multitude of times domestically as well as internationally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down some of the uh, preconceived notions and some of the uh, some of the fine print that doesn't get gone over when you initially attain your tire leaf visa. Stick around. I'm going to break it down and hopefully get something out of it. So when it comes to my particular case, I got in just in time for the first iteration of the Thai League visa. So now I went with the five-year visa because I didn't want to do the 20 or the 10 because sometimes things change and then you're locked in to a situation. And also it costs more money the, the longer or the longevity that you have on the Thai League visa. So I went with the five-year for around 17k. Now, if you've been paying attention to this, or you want to grab a Thai Elite visa on the second iteration of its of the program, they bumped it up around eight thousand dollars. So you're looking at now twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars for a five year Thai Elite visa. Now, if some of you are not familiar on what the Thai Elite visa gives you. You basically have carte blanche regarding multiple entries to the kingdom, as well as that you technically don't have to leave for five to 10 years. But what you have to do is that every 90 days, and this is very, very annoying, and I spoke about that once before, is that you have to get something called a TM30. So a TM30... Let's say you came in on the second iteration. What people usually don't speak about is that now, let's say you want to do a TM30. Number one, you have to go to immigration, which means you're going to burn a day. You have to get transportation, which means you're going to burn money. You have to give your passport to a liaison who's going to hold on to your passport for around two days, bring it to the people, you know, to immigration. So by the time it's all said and done, if it's four times 30, which is 12 months out of the year, you're looking at around 250 US dollars added on to your initial Thai elite visa price. So once again, if it was 26,000, it really becomes a little bit more than that regarding how much expenditure you're going to have or how you're going to allocate your funds. So what a lot of people will tell you to do, and I'll tell you to do it, is that for the Thai Elite Visa, it's a perfect opportunity for you to say, you know what? I don't want to deal with giving my passport. I don't want to go for the extra 300 US dollars. So what I'm going to do is for about one week, I'm going to go to Bali. I'm going to go to Vietnam. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. And then basically when you come back in, it restarts the clock on your passport. So now when we get into the finer points of the Thai elite visa, domestically, you do not have a liaison, which means you could get transportation to and from, right? Your vouchers. But no one is meeting and greeting you domestically. They don't mention that. International, here's the positive. I'm going to be positive right now. Where you're, where you're getting your money's worth is this. Internationally, you go to the airport, it's a zoo. They have transportation from your destination. They have somebody in a gold or a silver coat meet you. 
They take your passport. They check you in. They may even skip you, even if you're not running business class. They're going to try to put you on the business class line, and they're going to get you going that way. So I'm not exaggerating. I did international three times in the last six months. Leaving, leaving Bangkok, I was through security, and no exaggeration, point A to point B, it took me 10 minutes. That means the security or customs that you go through, you go through with the captains, the, uh, the steward and stewardesses or flight attendants. Supposedly I'm not allowed to say those words, but so when I say if you want to, if you're going to spend the money for that ease of travel internationally, it's very, very worth it. So when they receive you coming back into the kingdom, they're waiting for you. They actually, nine out of ten times, not always, they're going to put you on that little dune buggy, and they're going to take you to customs. Normally what happens is that the customs officer sees your, your, your basically your sticker and your passport, and there's no questions asked. Um, you really don't go through customs. So all these things considered, it's a very, very heavy price tag, granted, especially the second iteration. To be honest with you, if I had to do it all over again, $26,000 plus ancillary fees, right, for five years. Obviously, you know, I like to do math for you. It's almost six grand a year. But the thing is that, do you have to play this game of visa or border runs? You don't. But at the same time, contingent on your wallet. You know, some of you have education visas that, you know, if they're gazy or they're not, that I don't really care. But all it is basically is that 95% of the time, they're leaving you alone. To avoid the TN30, just to recap, just go somewhere else for a week, come back here. All right, so hopefully when it comes to the Thai Elite Visa update, for me, I still think it's a positive. Uh, some years, obviously, will complain because that's human nature, but uh, when the price went up, it's kind of shitty. Um, also, regarding the lounges that they give you access to, and here's another thing. You only get a liaison at a Savima Boom Airport, not Dom Wa. All right. I don't know if I said that well. So keep that in mind. If you're going to book, do it in BKK. If not, you won't get the liaison. So before you book your flight, just think of it like that. All right. So pull up your jokes. I'm trying to scream. I'm losing my voice. Hopefully you got something out of it. And we'll talk soon. Thank you.